So I'm here at the Park Avenue Armory, one of my new favorite places in New York City, and I am with legendary Nick Cave. <laughs> <laughs> We've I already know. started <laughs> having fun. And I'm here in one of the uh, rooms that they have on the main floor, and I'm looking at his magnificent sound suits. And I was just like dazzled by it. But um, let's dive right into it. Tell me, how did you get started? Because I know you went to school and you started in the fiber department learning how mm -hmm. to sew. But what else inspired you to think about fashion and then incorporating it with sculpture and dance? Mm -hmm. You know, I think it really started as a kid. You know, I'm one of seven boys. Mm -hmm. And I think the whole notion of clothing and adapting clothing happened when I was a young kid through the process of hand-me-downs. Okay. You know, how am I going to now make this my own? That's when I started to deconstruct and rebuild garments. Okay. So, you know, it's interesting where, you know, if you really sort of trace back, you will, I feel that you find things that you did in your youth that inform mm -hmm. how you exist today. And so that whole notion of hand-me-downs, this whole idea of recycling, repurposing, is a critical sort of part of my development, part of the making in the work. Uh, I spend a great deal of time in the antique malls, uh, thrift stores, okay. flea markets, l resourcing. That's where my resources are. Um, you know, it was Michael Jackson hmm. for me as a kid. When I saw him on t the Jackson 5 on TV oh, yes. for the first time, I, I could identify. I told my mother, I'm going to be famous like that. But not like that in terms of a performer through music, but mm -hmm. through... I didn't know really what the venue okay. or the way in which it was going to shape. You saw but the I knew that creativity was the sort of center, the forefront of what my destiny looks like today. You just brought a memory back to me, <clears throat> talking about recycling and hand-me-downs. As a little girl, I used to raid my grandmother's closet early in the morning, I turned the music on and she knew it was me and I said, I don't know what I'm going to wear today and I just opened up her closet well, and, <laughs> and which I started is, pulling it yeah, and just how do we find, how are we in search of identity yes. and style and a point of view that sort of fits with your DNA, the way that you're thinking, the way that you want to sort of be in the world. And so, you know, that's part of this sort of discovery. Yes. We're always in, nothing should ever stand still. Mm -hmm. You should always be in discovery mm -hmm. of yourself. I like that. But when I look at your costumes, and now we're going to move a little forward with your sound suits. And I know it began with the Rodney King, mm -hmm. King uh, beatings, which was really traumatic. But you were able to, with the sticks <clears throat> and the twigs that you have found, you were able to just like transform. Well, exactly. Uh, you know, looking at that twig on the ground when I was there, just in this sort of state of despair. Mm. and loss and, you know, just sort of profound by this horrific incident. I saw myself and I thought about, God, what does it feel like to be discarded, wow. viewed less than dismissed? Because <clears throat> mm -hmm. I don't know that feeling. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I was in the park and there was that twig on the ground and that became the catalyst for the first sound suit. Wow. Because that was discarded. You know, you walk over it, you walk on it, you dismiss it. And so I proceeded to gather all of the twigs in the park, went home, drilled holes in each one, started to build a sculpture, didn't think that I could put it on. 
Wow. I wasn't even thinking about it as a garment. The moment that I realized I could put it on, and the moment I stepped into it and started to move, it made sound. Mm. And making sound was me identifying a way of protest. Mm. That's deep. You know, it started to rattle. Wow. And so then I thought, in order, to, and so therefore you could, I could be heard. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so that then just led into this first collection of sound suits built from discarded found materials. And you know, and I was very interested in, you know, one sort of uh, trash is another one's treasure. That's true, that's true. And so that was the beginning of me spending time at the flea markets and antique malls. And it also was part of like, you know, I wasn't raised with a lot, but I wasn't poor. Thank you for saying that, because a lot of people don't I understand that. I was not poor. That. Yeah, we weren't poor. You know, my mother fed a family down the street. I remember bringing food to them, and I was so heartened by the thought that they didn't have any food. I could empath empathize with that. Mm -hmm. But I was blessed and lived and have been raised in this sort of in an in this sort of amazing world of entitlement right you know my mother my father they supported me they stood behind me they did they paid attention to what and who i was okay they stayed out of the way and allowed me to stand in that light that's beautiful that's entitlement yes it is in a very positive way you know, people get it confused. They think it's based in money. Money, no. Honey, the things that I was raised with, you can't buy. Mm-hmm. Because you're preaching now. You can't buy it. Uh -uh. So, you know, I know what it's like to, like, uh, have a, 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 a being in a family where, you know, we really couldn't necessarily buy the things we wanted. But it didn't mean that I could not renegotiate how I wanted my shirt to look. Okay. You know, I could sort of cut off the sleeves. I could add uh, buttons. buttons, or I could add a medallion, mm -hmm. or I could sort of draw on it. So whatever it took for me to sort of transform that, that is what has led me to sort of, and how I approach my work. It's all about transformation. It's all about, you know, these sound suits stand between this place of the unknown. Mm -hmm. uh, it hides gender, race, class, forcing you to look at something without judgment. Mm -hmm. In order for us to understand uh, things, we want to put them in a category. Well, here you are forced to stand up against something that you cannot categorize. And how do we look at that? Mm -hmm. How do we open ourselves up to, to difference? What I also like is that you still, though, incorporated history and culture. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, when it gets down to, you know, the object is one thing, but, you know, now I'm starting to pay attention to Mardi Gras mm -hmm. Indians. I'm looking at, you know, in Trinidad at Carnival. Uh, Haitian vestments, uh, the gung gung, mm -hmm. African influences. But all of that is part of this sort of cultural sort of dynamic. It's a world that is all based, my work is all based around ritual and ceremonial practices. And how does that inform and fold into my Western way of existing? And, and celebrating that. When I, I, I think of your artistic practice, I think of jazz. I think of this movement that's always changing, always evolving. Mm -hmm. And it's like, wow. That's how I look at some of your sculptures. I'm not even talking about the sound suits, just some of the sculptures. They have this otherworldly feel to them mm -hmm. and it's like this is you know that wow moment. yeah and I think for me it's really about a universal sort of outreach 
you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm, intri- I'm reaching, I'm trying to create work that we can talk about in this sort of global sort of way that, you know, somebody that's from Asia, Africa, Europe, we can all come in here and we can sort of stand in front of a sound suit and we can find some element that we can identify with mm-hmm. within our own co- culture, heritage. Mm-hmm. And so it's really about, again, you know, how do we, you know, it's a we're you know, the world is a blend universe. Yes, it is. You know, and how do we find common ground within because this sort of blended. diversity? We're all blended. We're not of any one no. particular group. We're blended people all over right. the world. I'm glad you said that because it's a nice way of actually acknowledging all these various influences, which you're just now telling me now. The Carnival, you mentioned Mardi Gras, you mentioned Africa. It's all this blendedness, but it's also urban. And oh, it's yeah. also, because, you know, you know city the, life. In the end of the day, it's urban. It's me sort of, again, taking sort of couture practices in terms mm-hmm. of how embellishment becomes a way of adorning ah. and creating a pattern and surfaces. It's all about rhythm, the way in which color may be applied. And color also can create movement through the way in which it's repetitive. And so I'm sort of diving into futuristic, mm-hmm. you know, uh, moments and, and looking at um, futurism, and particularly within the black culture. Uh, and then from hip hop to jazz to. Uh, Wakanda. <laughs> <clears throat> Exactly. All the rage because Black Panther has shown so many people African culture that they knew nothing about. Well, you know, when you think about like even sort of Chanel Mm. and you think about all those chains and all of that, those all that accessory, all of that is coming, stripping up, stripping straight up out of the hood. Mm. We are a major influence in the world. But we have to stop forgetting about our position of power Mm. and stand in it and claim it and own it and build that into the empire that you want to exist in. Then that dovetails into the let go because the let go is dealing with current times well, and, and the craziness of well, our current the let times. Go, exactly, but you know, the let go is this magnificent space, safe space mm-hmm. for ways that you can use to, it's, all, it's really a form of therapy. It's being able to come to a place we may have our differences, but we're not communicating. It's not through verbal. It's all through movement. Mm. And it's harmless. Mm. I like that. And so you can be illustrating your position through movement that I may find to be interesting or we may find that we are intersecting through this sort of bodily sort of contact and we're working out the frustrations because for me dance has always been a form of savior it is what has saved me Mm. uh and particularly when i was in school you know i would go to the club and just work out the frustrations of like being in the studio and, and things not working out and just being able to sort of work through it and come out feeling rejuvenated but sometimes you know, dance can help where words are not enough. Well, words can, yeah, words can also hurt. Mm-hmm. And so for young and people, so, this could be a very therapeutic yeah. experience. I don't have the words. I don't know the words. I'm frustrated. I can't communicate the words, but I can move. Show them through action. Mm-hmm. And it's a teachable moment. Mm-hmm. This is great. 
This is your first time at the Park Avenue yeah. Armory, too. How does it feel being here? You know, it's magnificent. You know, for me, you know, it's a place that still not a lot of people know about. Mm. And still a place that a lot of people of color don't know about. That's because they feel that it's in this very wealthy up but, east side. You know, right I'm an artist of color and so it's my duty mm -hmm. to change that dynamic. Okay. And so I'm working with probably 80% are, are artists of color that are coming in and doing special projects in the space. Because for me it's important that there is diversity mm -hmm. brought here. Mm -hmm. And for me to be working with young people and for them to stand in this Place and to be able to look around and to know that this is all possible. It's all about possibility. Yeah. You know, when I first traveled out of the country, I remember standing in at the Eiffel Tower and I looked around and I was like, this is all possible. I am somewhere else. And what does that mean? And how do I mean? Maintain this kind of experience. Okay. How do we maintain, ex you know, experiences that affect and change our lives? And so, for me, this is what the Park Armory is about. It's about creating a installation that is about an experience that somehow I hope can help inform, help provide a sense of direction, of possibility. And we need that today. Yeah. I think the last just few weeks oh, have... It's frightening. Yes, it has been frightening and I think confusing for so many people. And what can we do as individuals? How can we be of service based around these difficult times? What can we do to pull us together, to unify, to... Uh, be informed, to be a part of. We've got to think about that. And we've got to somehow, instead of like complaining and having a point of view, how can you apply that to something? I also feel that what's important is that we still need to bridge divides with other folks who, for some reason, may feel lost themselves, you know, thinking, I'm in a bad situation, you're in a better situation. Well, how do you know if I'm in a better situation? And the arts can help people to see that oh, we're yeah. all coming from the same. Right. I mean, you, you know. know, the amazing thing about being here and working with the 30 dancers we're working with, working with the uh, uh, V. Higgins youth choir uh, and being able to sit sit down with mm -hmm. these performers and just hearing the testimonies mm. is everything. Wow. People, you know, they want experiences but they want to be able to respond to them. They want you to know what what the experience was and how it has changed or informed them in a different way. We all just want to be heard. Yes. And do you and to feel... Be able to, for me, it's... You know, I understand my work. I know what my role is. Right. But, you know, my mission is to use art as a vehicle for change. So I've got to be able to create work that allows me to stand out of the way okay. in order for other people. And that's very selfless. Involved. Yeah. That's very selfless. You have certain artists who won't allow themselves to step out of the way. They have to be in the moment receiving attention mm -hmm. all the time. But you seem to understand the real essence of what art is and that it's a process and it's yeah. about life. And I was going to ask, so as you're looking at your, your artistic practice, do you uh, feel that you know, you're you're moving now in a direction where you can teach others to uh, at least try to 
copy some of what you're doing and, and pushing it forward and, and responding to it so that others will also dare to try, dare to believe, dare to do. Well, uh, yeah, uh, certainly. I think for me, it's, um, you know, I do it through, I think, you know, there's all sorts of ways to teach. Mm -hmm. And again, being here at the Park Armory, you know, there's these there's a hundreds and thousands of teaching moments that happen here every day we come in and perform and perform each there's not one performance that is the same okay uh you have an audience mm -hmm. you know what do you what do you wake up and how do you feel that morning and how is this how is this performance going to be approached what are you delivering in the process and what are you receiving wow again we've got to stay open mm -hmm. in order to receive to detract we've got to be able to sort of have the mobility to navigate and move accordingly to plan I think that's you know for me and for our people we as you said at the beginning, adapting. Yes. We've adapted for ages. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. what a beautiful thing. Yes. I really do feel that for people of color, being able to constantly adapt has been one of our gifts in life. And when I see your sound uh, uh, suits and when I see the other uh, true sculptures that you mm -hmm. do, that you have exhibited, I feel that. I feel this transformation, you know, going on, and I'm very impressed by it all and overwhelmed by Thank it you. as well. So um, how has been the reaction to your, you know, sort of uh, residency here? It's, you know, the reaction to the residency, to the let go, has been remarkable. Uh, because, you know, I know what the intent of how the project is to be used. Okay. And so I know how to set that stage. I know how to invite the world in. And I know how to create an experience. Mm -hmm. And then the rest is left up to you. Okay. Okay. You know, I've created, I've invited you here to be a part of something. What is that to you? What is that something? How are you, what are you identifying with? What are you sort of experiencing? And how are you going to let go here? Wow. That is something to let go. That's, releasing is so important every day. If we all sat in silence for one hour every day, we would be a different country. Mm. Mm. We would be a different country. We're so distracted with all this noise that we have never, if we just settle down and get quiet, that's when you'll come to your truth. I, I, I get overwhelmed when I hear too much clutter, too much noise, and I'll just shut things down because it's like, no, I have to think. I need to have my yeah, head we clear. Have to, yeah, we have to give ourselves space. You know, it's, it takes everything just to be. Mm -hmm. Just to wake up and just to be takes my entire being to, to, to process that. So, Wow. This has been such a pleasure. I was. But it's, it's great talking to you. I had such a great time. I was looking forward to this all day. I made sure that nobody interfered with my <laughs> mood and day. I loved the weather. This Will is you be like, here tonight? No, I, 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 I didn't get that, but I'll, I'm going to follow up oh with Tom God, to see. Oh, you've got to come tonight to, to, to the uh, artist's response. 
Oh God! If he gets it's me, it's here. I'll get you. you can, I'll bring you in, and you can just sit in there, and you're in. Okay. If this, you want to come. Yes, this has been so wonderful. I've enjoyed this so much. We're gonna have this up online by tomorrow. This has been great. This is wonderful. I already posted up on Instagram. I just want to take one picture with you before okay. we end. And and okay. this has been great. Thank you. Thank you. Oh God, I love this. This has been so wonderful.